As you recall, we selected the username sample and a virtual host of sample.com. Now, unfortunately, we do not own the sample.com domain, but that does not prevent us from configuring our website. What USA 8 does is create an additional virtual host in the form of username.usa8 with the words written out dot com. So we're going to go ahead and in the email you can see our password is here. This is automatically generated. This is our global password for the account. So now let's go ahead and copy that to the clipboard. And let's go ahead and click on this site, sample.usa8.com. Now, on the initial configuration, it's going to prompt us for a username and password. So let's go ahead and use the username of sample, which we selected upon signup, and the password that we just copied to the clipboard, and click login. And this will take us directly to the Joomla configuration page. So let's go ahead and select a site name of sample site from USA 8. And uh, our admin email is sample at USA8.net because it comes with a free email account. Uh, admin username, I'd recommend just using admin. And the password, let's go ahead and select the default password that we were given upon sign up. And you can always change this later on. And we don't need the site off site, offline, so let's go ahead and leave that on. So leave that to no, and click Next. So the next thing we're going to do is configure the database. Now we're connecting to another server for database, and in the email you'll see cdb1.usa8.net. That's customer database 1.usa8.net. Your username is sample, and your password is the same as the password you were given upon sign up. And the database name is just sample. And you can go ahead and change the table prefix to something else. So let's go ahead and uh, change it to today's date. 201, actually, uh, D2013 0714. And uh, go ahead and make sure that that has an underscore. And that's to prevent us from having a collision between other table names. It can be anything as long as it's arbitrary, and that allows you to have multiple applications on one database. So go ahead and click Next. And we're going to say install sample data none, and this is going to give us a Bootstrap website. And Bootstrap is the user interface used by places like Twitter or Gmail. So let's go ahead and um, make sure these are all green. And these are, there are some warnings, those aren't a big deal. And you can see we're using database type MySQLi, hostname cdb1.usa8.net, sample, and of course our password is concealed. And again, the database name is sample. And um, go ahead and have an email the configuration. Keep in mind, your email does not have to be your USA 8 email. It can be anything. It can be any email that you have access to. So go ahead and select Install. And it's going to run a few moments. OK, if you get to the screen, that's a good sign. It means that Joomla has, in fact, installed. So um, if you have other languages you want to install, you can do that. But we're just going to go ahead and remove Installation folder. Okay, so now the installation folder has been removed. We're going to go ahead and log in as administrator. So click on administrator. And the password is the one you selected upon sign up. Go ahead and log in. And you can see here, this is the main Joomla control panel. And from this point, you can do things like add articles, create menus, add modules. And we're going to go through all of these in, in future lessons. So let's go ahead and um, we can log out at this point because we have successfully installed Joomla. Now let's go ahead and start adding some content to our Joomla site. So let's log in as admin, and we know our password. So go ahead to log in, and it'll take you right to the control panel. On the upper right hand, you'll see several items, quick icons. Go ahead and click on Category Manager. Every single article needs to be in a category. By default, they go in the category uncategorized, but we're going to make our own categories and use it to sort them accordingly in menus. So click on New. And let's create a category called Airplanes. In this, we're going to have two different articles. And when you're done, click on Save and New, because we're going to create two additional categories. Passenger Trains.
and cars. So we've now gone and created three new categories. So let's go ahead and create an article now about the Boeing 747. Click on Articles and click on New. In the upper right here, select Category of Airplanes, and let's call it 747. In the text box below, we've pasted some text about the Boeing 747. Now let's click on Save and New, because we're going to create another airplane-related article. This one will be about the F-14 Tomcat from Grumman. To save, to copy the articles from uh, Wikipedia. So go ahead, Save and New. Now let's go ahead and create some train-related articles. So now we've got some information about Amtrak, so let's save. And now an article about a Japanese passenger train, the Toki. And now let's put in some information about cars. And another one about cars. So let's go ahead and close because we've created six articles. Now you can see our list of articles has the categories here, and they're all uh, separate categories. So now we're going to build a menu with these articles and then you'll be able to select them from the website. So let's go to the top and select Menus. Menu Manager. And we're going to edit the main menu. This comes with a lot of sample menus, but what we want to do is edit the main menu and add some of these articles. Go ahead and select, on, select Menu Item Type here. And let's go ahead and say Articles and we want to say category block because each menu is going to have all the articles in that particular category so let's go ahead and do that right now and the first menu is going to be the category of airplanes and let's call the menu planes and it is going to be under the main menu location and the menu item root will be the uh, parent location which means it's a it's at the top of the menu bar so let's go ahead and save and new I'm going to go ahead and select another category blog. I'm going back to Articles, Category Blog. This time we're going to select the category of Trains, or Passenger Trains. And let's call the menu title simply Trains. Let's go ahead, Save and New. And now the last one is also going to be a category blog. and this time cars. And let's call the menu title automobiles. And this time we'll save and close. And now to view our menu, let's go to menus, main menu. Go ahead and click on that. And now you can see our menus listed. So let's take a look at see how the site looks. On the upper left hand corner here, click on sample site. And now you should see these menu items. So let's go ahead and click on planes. Isn't that fantastic? Trains. Now you can see the trains articles and automobiles. Let's go ahead and scroll down and take a look at these. You can see that it sort of appears in a blog format. So let's go ahead and take a look at what the articles look like. The next thing we're going to do is add submenus. And we'll do that in the next part of this uh, menu uh, creation lesson. So now we're back at the menu manager. Let's add some new menu items. Go ahead and click on New in the upper left-hand corner. This time we want to add a single article. Go ahead and click on Menu Item Type, Articles, Single Article. And now let's go ahead and select an article type. I'm sorry, an article. Go ahead and click on this box here. And you can see our list of articles here. Let's click the first one, the Boeing 747, the first article we created. And let's call the menu title Large Jet. And here's where it gets interesting. The menu location is under the main menu, but the menu parent item is going to be under planes. So let's scroll down so we can actually see what we're doing here. You can see we've selected planes as the menu item route. Now let's go to Save and New. And we're going to do the same thing. 
but this time it's another single article. Let's go ahead and select the article. And this time it'll be the F14 Tomcat. Again, the parent item is going to be planes. So let's go ahead and save. Oh, it looks like we forgot the menu title. Small jets. Okay, now save and new. Okay, so now let's go ahead and add another article. Single article. And let's say this one will be about a train. So Amtrak, menu title, American Public Transit. The parent item is going to be trains. And save and new. And we're going to add another article under trains. Let's call it Japanese Public Transit. And the parent item for this one will be trains. Let's go ahead and save and new. And we just have two more articles, so let's go ahead, menu item type, articles, single article. Nope, oh, that's the wrong one. The menu title, we'll select the article. And let's say the Ford Mustang. Fast Ford car. And the parent item, in this case, will be automobiles. You, you can see the menu structure beginning to appear in this parent item drop-down, and this will become more apparent when we view the site. Now again, save and new. And we're going to add the last article. The Corvette. The parent item for this one will be automobiles. This time we can save and close. And now we can take a look at the menu structure that appears in our uh, menu manager. So there's this definite hierarchical uh, menu structure and we'll see that when we do the website in just a moment. Let's go up here and click sample site again. And now you can see definite pull-down menus. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, Japanese Public Transit. And now it just shows us this article. Just, just the single article that's matched with that menu item. So let's take a look at automobiles, fast GM car, Corvette, and you can see here uh, the content that we pasted in there. So now we've built um, some categories, articles, and uh, we've put them into menus, and this is definitely um, uh, it, definitely the site's starting to come along and look really nice. In the next lesson, we'll customize this some more and make it look much better. So the next thing we're going to do is remove some of the information that appears around the articles on the website, and we're going to select one as a featured article to appear on the front page. Then we're going to add some graphics to the menus and the articles, and then we're going to take a look at some of the modules that you can enable. So go up to System and select Global Configuration. Okay, the first thing we want to do is select the, have it indicate the site name and page title. So let's go down here to the middle on the right side and indicate that we want the site name before the page title. So let's go ahead and select that. Now click Save and Close. Now we're back at the control panel and select Article Manager on the right side. In the menu bar under the Article Manager, select Options. Let's go ahead and disable some of the some of the information. Let's turn uh, on hide category. We don't care to show the category. Now let's go down a bit and hide the author, hide the modify date, the publish date. Um, let's go ahead and leave navigation on, and uh, let's go ahead and um, turn off read more. 
And let's scroll down a bit more and select Show Hits, and let's go to Hide That also. And let's go ahead and save and close at the top and take a look at the site. And now you can see what we've done is we've, let's go ahead to one of the articles and take a look. And you can see that we've cleaned it up quite a bit. We don't see the author creation date. And that's better for simpler sites where we only have one author. And we're, in our case, we're the only author. author. Later on, we'll probably want to enable that. But for this sample, let's go ahead and leave that off. Now we're back at the article manager. And one of the things we want to do is have a default article that appears on the front page. And let's go ahead and take a look at the column here. These are the articles. There's actually a couple more. And let's say we want to have the article about the Boeing 747 on the front page. So let's go ahead and click this star next to the check mark. And that will turn it into a featured article. And then we'll go ahead and we're going to select on the sample site here. And you'll see what it looks like. And now you see when we go to the home site that there's a default article here, the 747 article. So that, what that means, a featured article, what that means is that the article actually appears when you go to the site. And it is in fact featured. And you can have any number of those and they'll appear uh, in the order that, uh, in the reverse order that they get entered into the system. So now let's go to the menu at the top and let's go to the media manager. And from here we're going to actually upload some images that we're going to use on our site. Go ahead and click on detail view because then it'll tell you a bit more in the same screen. Now the cool thing about the media manager is we can go ahead and click on this upload button and upload directly from our local computer uh, as many images as we need and then we'll use them later on to customize the site. So go ahead and click on upload and here it says choose file. Go ahead and select choose file. And this will pop up a box that we can then go to and select the file that we want to upload. We're going to go ahead and upload all of these because we're going to use them in the articles on this site. So go ahead and select all of those and in, uh, click the choose button. And when you've done that, go ahead and select start upload. And now you can see in the media manager, there's a whole bunch of new files that have been uploaded. We're going to go ahead and use those to customize our articles and make them look nice. So let's go ahead and uh, go to um, what we've already uploaded. So now we just need to go back to the um, menu manager. Now there's a lot of sample data that comes with this and it's going to have all the menus. But what we really wanted to go to is menu items. So go ahead and collect menu items in the upper left here. And now we're going to select main menu. There's some additional data that comes additional sample stuff that comes, but what we really want is main menu, which we created in the previous exercise. And we're going ahead and customize that, and it'll look really nice in just a moment. So now let's go down and select large jet, which is the first menu we want to customize. Just go ahead and click on it. And you can actually go to this advanced options that's up here in the secondary title bar, secondary menu bar, rather. So go ahead and click on advanced options. And scroll down to here where it reads link type options and go ahead and click on that. And what we're going to do is select a link image. So let's go ahead and select. And we're going to choose actually small 747, but this is an article about large jets. So let's go ahead and scroll down in the media manager here and select this. And let's go ahead and click the, the insert button rather. Now let's click Save and Close, and we're going to go take a look at the site. Click on Sample Site. And now we've added an image to this large jet menu item. So let's go ahead and we're going to add all the images, the small sized images, to these menu items. And we'll do that all and then come back and now add, and then add images to the articles. Now we've added the menu graphics. Let's go ahead and take a look at the site. 
Now you can see each menu has a little graphic next to the item. Uh, this menu, it looks like we're going to have to adjust this. And obviously this logo hasn't been set. So the next thing we're going to do is go back and customize this theme and adjust the width of this menu and fix this logo. So go up to Extensions and select Template Manager. So you can see where there's a star here. Go ahead and select T3 blank default. Click on that. So now we're editing the style. Go ahead and click on Theme here. And let's go ahead and select the logo image. Go ahead and click Select. Now by default you need a logo that's 204 by 65 pixels. We've uploaded one called loco.jpg. Go ahead and click on that and select Insert. Now we've modified the theme by adding this logo. Let's go ahead and fix that menu. So click on Navigation. In newer versions of the template, this will be up above in a button that reads Mega Menu, but for this it's Navigation. Go ahead and click on that. Now scroll down a bit to where it reads Mega Menu Toolbox and select the Trains menu. And what we want to do is click in this outline, this gray area here, and we're going to adjust the width of this menu. Let's make it 240 or 250 pixels. Let's go ahead and change that, and now you can see that it unwrapped those, and we're going to go ahead and save this. In the upper left, click Save, and we're going to check out the site again. Now you can see the logo has changed, and this is formatted uh, properly, and the next thing we're going to do is edit these articles to add the large graphics to them. Click Close to get out of the Template Manager, and let's go back to the Content Menu and select the Article Manager. And you can edit each individual article and add a picture. We're going to do just one so, so you can see how it's done. So click on Boeing 747. And at the top of the article, let's add a couple of blank lines. And then we're going to click on Image here to insert an image. And let's go ahead and select this large 747 engineering drawing. Insert in the upper right here. And let's go ahead and save and close. Let's go back and visit the site again. And now we're at the home page, and you can see this drawing of the Boeing 747 and the article text. And the next thing we're going to do to clean this up is remove some of these items at the bottom by going to the Module Manager. So let's go up to Extensions and select Module Manager. In the upper right, let's go ahead and view all modules. And now we're going to scroll down a bit and unpublish these footer 1 through footer 6 by selecting the check mark to the left and un or disabling them rather. So let's go ahead. We've disabled footer one, footer two. Let's go ahead and select all of these. What you can do is check here and then hold down the shift key and check here and then go up to unpublish like this and that will remove all of them. And now let's go ahead and you can see that on the site we've got I'm gonna unselect this, but you can see that we've got we don't have those items at the bottom anymore. We've actually disabled the modules that those are part of. In the next section, we're going to add some modules to this from the pre-existing modules, and then we're going to also find out how to add modules to our configuration. Now, one of the things that we want to do on our website as an exercise is allow people to create accounts, log in. And what we're going to do is, on the left side here, um, there's going to be an indentation, and there will be a login box. So we're going to now go back into the administrative site and go to the menu manager. I'm sorry, to the module manager. So just in case you forgot, you go up to extensions and select module manager. Now in the sample site, there's a whole bunch of modules that are installed but are not actually visible. We'll go ahead, and we could go ahead and you could clean those out, uh, but we're going to leave that as an exercise for you. So let's go ahead and now click on new in the upper left hand here, the green button. And it's going to ask us to select a module type. So go ahead and select Login on the left here. Now one of the things we know in this template is we want to put it on the left side, which is known as Sidebar-1. So let's create the login and let's call it uh, the login module and call it Access Your Account. And the position we're going to select is Sidebar1. And we want to make sure it's under T3 blank. And that's it. And then you go to Save and Close. And now what we're going to do is go ahead and up in the upper left, let's view this. And now you can see this access your account on the left side here. And you can go ahead and create an account. And that's going to be visible on every page 
because we haven't specified it. And you can go through and, and actually specify specific pages, but we're going to leave that as an exercise, as a learning exercise. You can see here it's on every site. So uh, and later on, you can actually create, um, well, now that you have this, you can actually create menus that are for registered users only, and then they have to go ahead and create an account and view uh, premium content, uh, if you want to call it that. And that's one of the things you can do with logins. The next thing we're going to do is add a custom module with some sliding graphics. So let's go ahead and point our browser at extensions.joomla.org. And in the upper right hand corner we're going to search for ARI Image Slider. Now we're going to go ahead and click on the title ARI Image Slider. And then just go to here and click on download. Now there's a possibility you may need to create an actual account in order to download the ARI image slider and that should be free. So now let's go under the extension menu and select extension manager and it's going to ask us to upload a package file. So go ahead and click on choose file and go to your sample directory or wherever you've stored that module zip file and select it and click choose. Now click upload and install. You should get this green bar and success message indicating that the installation of the module was successful. Now go to Extensions Module Manager. You should see the ARI image slider. Go ahead and click right on that. And let's go ahead and go to Options. Scroll down to Image Path and just type Images. And this is going to take us to the default images file that Joomla uses, default images directory. Go ahead and click on Save. Scroll up and click on Details. Now under Status, select Published. Under Position, select position dash one. Make sure you're under the T3 blank template. And then go ahead and select save and close. Actually we forgot to do something so go to the module manager again and search for ARI image slider and go ahead and click on it. We realized we forgot to have it enabled on any pages so go click on menu assignment and go ahead and select on all pages and save and close. Now, viewing our site, we can see that the images are a little bit too large, so we're going to head, go ahead and resize that module so that it's a little more usable. So let's go ahead and go back into the module manager and select our ARI image slider. And go ahead and click on options, and then we're going to scroll down. And now we're going to go ahead and set responsive to yes. And what that does is it tells it to resize that according to the window size. Go ahead and click save and go ahead and close that. Let's go back into the template manager and adjust the web template. Click on T3 blank and go to layout and scroll down to where it reads position 1, 2, 3, and 4 and go ahead and select 1. And let's go ahead and save this and let's close that out. And let's go back to the module manager once again. Click on ARI image slider. We're going to customize this a little bit more. Go to Options, and let's go ahead and set the width to something like 940 pixels and the height to uh, 345. And go ahead and save and close. Actually, just save that because we're going to do one other thing with this module. Go back to Details, and let's go ahead and hide the title. And let's go ahead and save and close one more time. And now let's go ahead and click on View the Site one last time. And now you can see that there's this beautiful image slider up top here. It's going to slide back and forth between the images in the images directory, and it's going to adjust them accordingly. And that will appear on every page. So that's our image slider. That gives you a very professional looking site with uh, moving images. So there you have it. In a little over a half an hour, we've gone from a recently purchased USA 8 site to a nice looking Joomla site. Uh, some of these images are pixelated, which is fine because they are all different sizes and it has to stretch them accordingly. And there you have it. We've built the site in under an hour. And it's got everything you want. It's got menus, articles, login options, and uh, you can get people to start signing up for your site now. Hopefully you found this enjoyable. And uh, take a look at some of the options. We'll actually build a site like this for you uh, for a pretty affordable price and go to usa8.net and uh, check out some of the options. Thank you very much.